Now we've been seeing a staggering increase in the number of myocarditis incidents. So a lot of, especially young males, were having myocarditis. And your book was published in 2021, so you did not have the opportunity to talk about the potential negative effects of the vaccine and also from the COVID virus. So what is your opinion toward that staggering increase towards myocarditis, which is an inflammation of the myocardium? Yeah. So, you know, we certainly know mechanistically that uh, both the COVID vaccine and the COVID virus itself uh, can lead to inflammation in the heart. Myocarditis seems to be more common in younger people uh, and maybe especially younger males. Uh, more broadly, you know, there did, there did seem to be a noticeable uptick in heart disease in general throughout the COVID pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, now, I think there are a lot of competing issues here, right? We have yeah. uh, this rising wave of metabolic disease that we've been talking about. Uh, and in a lot of ways, I think COVID uh, it helped to uh, unearth that, right? Or, mm -hmm. or maybe make it even more apparent. Yeah. And you know, one of the things I look at is that huge lost opportunity because it was obvious from the early days of COVID, right? Those first cases, you know, if people think back coming out of China and out of Italy and then New York, um, that the people that were getting sickest and the people that were dying were metabolically unhealthy. And, you know, there was a little bit of talk around this, right? But instead of saying, okay, what can we do to get more metabolically healthy, right? Let's mm -hmm. talk about diet and lifestyle. Um, we unfortunately did things that made the problem worse, right? We yes. locked people in their homes. Yeah. Uh, we told them to eat, you know, comfort food, right? And No sunlight, and, yeah, no nothing. Yeah, no sunlight, no exercise, you yeah. know. I mean, everyone might remember, you know, the gyms were closed, the playgrounds were closed, yeah. right? Crazy things that we did. Um, and then, you know, we introduced the vaccines, this yeah. novel therapeutic agent. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, on the one hand, I could say I could understand, right, there was a rush to try and get this out. But on the other hand, we have to acknowledge it wasn't tested well. And something mm -hmm. like myocarditis, which shows up in young men who weren't in the trial groups that yeah. these medications were tested upon, right, you know, I can forgive the fact that it took a little bit of time to recognize this as a problem. Mm -hmm. I can't forgive that once the problem was apparent, it was then ignored, right? That yeah. should have been mm -hmm. a reason to step back and say, maybe we shouldn't be giving this vaccine to people. Uh, maybe we shouldn't be giving it to young people who by that time we knew were at low risk from the disease to start with, right? Yeah. And again, maybe we should have just used this opportunity to say the best way to protect yourself against this uh, pandemic was to be metabolically healthy. Yeah. And also, I, I feel like we, we created a, like a, a long flu environment because, uh, in my opinion, I think the flu is not something that really happens. Uh, I would say more about the flu is a time that people get weaker metabolically because they do not take the sun. It's, it's colder. They, they eat more comfortable foods. And that's the same thing that happened during COVID, but it, in a long span. For about one year, two years, I remember all my sophomore year that I wouldn't go to school. I would sleep all day, not even watch the classes, for example, and just eat comfortable food. Uh, that, was, that was my routine at the time, and I believe that was the routine from the majority of people, despite the fact that people got even more stressed because many of them lost jobs. Many of them had complicated conditions, I would say, financially spe uh, specifically. And that also leads you to go um, displace that um, stressor towards food, for example. That's what many people do, unfortunately. And I think that's what really brought the problem from uh, the vaccines and also, I would say, from, from myocarditis itself. Because um, that's one of the things that I talk with Dr. Neil Nathan, which is a mold um, expert, for example. And he mentioned that, um, for example, we can be contaminated by those... Um, by those mold toxins and other toxins in your body. However, your, your immune system can neutralize them. But there, there's a time that it gets so much that your immune system cannot deal with it. And then all of them act upon your body and you feel weak, you feel tired, uh, chronic fatigue and all of that. That's the same feeling. But I'm sorry, I interrupted you. What are you going to say? No, I mean, <laughs> you know, th this is a great point, right? That um, 
when your body is battling against metabolic disease, right, and you have inflammation uh, and uh, your, uh, you know, immune system is affected by this, right, you're exactly right. When other things come along, whether it be a virus or a mold toxin or, some, you know, whatever it might mm -hmm. be, right, your body now doesn't have the capacity to fight that like it should. Uh, and we see this over and over again, right? It, it, you know, in a lot of ways I worry, right? Because, yeah. uh, as a clinician, it sounds kind of crazy, right? That almost every condition that we look at, yeah. it's rooted in this insulin resistance and this metabolic mm -hmm. disease. And, you know, I, I do kind of find, uh, you know, that I have to stop and kind of check myself and say, you know, well, Pretty much everyone, everything that people come to you with, you know, you're talking about metabolic disease. Yeah. But then it just keeps proving itself, right? Because we we address that and the conditions get better. Um, so, uh, you know, COVID was one example of that, uh, but there were many others. And ultimately, you know, I believe that addressing insulin resistance, addressing metabolic health um is going to have massive impacts on people's health. And it's all sorts of these end conditions that people show up with, right? We haven't talked about things like autoimmune disease, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, gut issues, right? Yeah. Things like irritable bowel disease uh, that all get better when you address metabolic health and you change your habits uh, to improve that.